Hi there, my name is Robin and welcome back to Only the Best Fantasy. Today I want to put together another list of 10 really amazing standalone fantasy novels, um, which is basically a rarity in the fantasy genre. And I felt like this is a list that not a lot of people would really benefit from. Um, if you if you happen to see this video at least. Um, so anyway, first on the list is P. Jelly Clark. P or P. Jelly Clark. I'm, I'm honestly not sure how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry if I butchered it. But it's A Master of Gin, which is an awards darling from 2022. And um, it has some associated short stories, but they're irrelevant. I never read them. They're, um, this is very much a book that can be read and enjoyed as a standalone. Um, it does make occasional reference to one or two um, one or two adventures that previously happened that you don't really need to know or care about. I'm assuming those are the plots of the short stories. If you want to read them, more power to you. But I didn't read them and it really didn't impact my enjoyment of this novel. And I did truly enjoy this novel. This novel was, it, it really blew my mind. It, it was really fun, really captivating. And um, what, what it is about is the first female ministry agent um, for the administration of anything magic in a faux Egyptian setting. Um, gets in way over her head when a secret brotherhood is murdered by a figure who the best way to describe him is legendary. They're a, a significant historical fig figure who has supposedly returned and um, created shockwaves by murdering this brotherhood. Um, first and foremost, for once I agree with this with, with this award, with, with this book sweeping awards, because it was incredibly imaginative, it was very creatively handled, and it does a lot of things just so right. It's essentially an urban fantasy um, story, but similar to China Medieval, this isn't urban fantasy along the veins of Jim Butcher and all the various Dresden file homes. This is urban fantasy. A little more creative, a little more meaty, a little more thought-provoking. Um, the whereas action and adventure are big parts of it. It's not necessarily the entire the entirety of the novel's hook. Um, it just does so. It, it just incorporates so many things and just does it all really well, really wonderfully. Um, but yeah, that's my first pick. My second pick would actually be Daryl Gregory's Spoonbenders, which is another novel that makes an appearance on the award list, specifically the World Fantasy Award. And this is a hilariously fun and chaotic novel documenting the life of a less than normal suburban family. Um, they're a family of quote unquote psychics. Um, whether they do have powers or not is up for grabs most of the novel. Um, as to what type of family they are, if you are a fan of Shameless and you're familiar with the Gallaghers, then that ought to give you a good idea of what's going on here. It's really hilarious. These these are all, this is a ensemble cast of very intriguing characters, and it makes for a really engaging, really compelling novel from start to finish. And the ending is just this absolutely chaotic fire fest of events that really, re really capstones the novel well. Um, it, it it hit the World Fantasy Award list for a reason. It, it's, it's really fun, really engaging, absolutely worth checking out. The next one is a novel I feel it doesn't need much introduction. It's probably the most commonly listed novel on these kinds of series of lists, and it's Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett's novel Good Omens. Um, it's it it basically combines Neil Gaiman's specialty of mythology retellings and and mythology based 
and fairy tale based stories with Terry Pratchett's uh, comic humor and really insightful writing to come up with a really short, punchy, and madcap story about the apocalypse. And an angel and a devil who set out to basically derail it because they just like the status quo, uh, the way things are. Um, but yeah, and like I said, I, I feel like that novel doesn't need much introduction. My next novel, on the other hand, is one that I feel does need some introduction, and it's Umbria in Shadow by Patricia McKillip. Um, Patricia McKillip is a criminally underread author in my books, and Umbria in Shadow is one of her best novels by far. Um, she, I, I consider her a grandmaster of the genre. She was writing really insightful, really compelling stories in the fantasy genre at the same time when many of her peers were just trying to do their best Tolkien impression. Um, she was writing stories that they, they tend to fall more within the um, with within that particular section of novels that I think about that aren't influenced by Tolkien, um, that are more heavily influenced by fantasy roots of mythology and fairy fairy tales, um, and Army and Shadow is definitely one such novel. It's um it's basically a gothic high fantasy novel set in this crazy um set in this absolutely crazy shadow world. Um, What can I say about it? It's gripping, it's captivating, it's a novel that made it onto the Golan's um, fantasy masterworks list for a reason. It's absolutely brilliant, it's absolutely worth checking out. And like everything else on this list, it is a standalone, so there is no major investment to be made here. My next entry is actually from one of my all-time favorite authors, and that's China Mayville's novel The City and the City. Um, I, it still shocks me, having joined Booktube a while now, that so many other creators on this platform haven't, like, are barely discussed Johnny Mayville. They rarely, he rarely makes an appearance in their um, in their videos. I um, I suspect it's because he hasn't written anything fiction in like a decade and change, um, and that's changing soon. That's changing soon. He finally has a new novel coming out. Um, but yeah, they, um, I, I don't think China and Mayville needs much introduction if you're a fantasy fan and if you're a big enough fantasy fan to make it to as obscure a channel as mine is. Um, the reason why I recommend The City and the City is because it is his most accessible novel by far. Um, it's probably his most... Um, is most accessibly written in terms of the vocabulary. He doesn't really throw you over the throw you into the deep end the way he does in a lot of his other novels. And it does have a very captivating concept that has since unfortunately been replicated. So a lot of the punch of it will have been taken out. But at the time when this novel is released and you read about the city and the city, it it blows your mind. Um, but even I, I think even with the core concept having been replicated and becoming a, a bit more familiar to fantasy authors, I think that this novel will still absolutely capture you and at the very least you'll you'll sp have a good time spending a few hours reading it. Um, my next pick at number six is actually Naomi Novik's Spinning Silver, which is her take on Rumpelstiltskin. Um, oddly enough, a lot of people seem to like Uprooted more, but I really, really enjoyed Spinning Silver. Maybe it's just because this one had more of a financial aspect to it, but there, were, there was just something absolutely rich and compelling and engaging on it, on a level that Uprooted just didn't work for me. Um, Uprooted was also good, but it just didn't capture me the way Spinning Silver did. Um, an absolutely breathtaking novel, and one 
it, it was my first, it was my introduction to Naomi Novik. And since then, I think I've read everything that she's written except for those new School of Man's books. Um, her most recent trilogy or her most recent series. And honestly, I, I'm not a fan of the whole magical school thing at this point. It, it's been overdone. Um, it's very, very cliche. So <laughs> at this point, so I think I'll, I'll leave that for maybe some distant time in the future when I'm not so saturated with it uh, but yeah now my next pick for a standalone novel that's absolutely worth reading is Brandon Sanderson's You Me and the Nightmare Painter this might be Brandon Sanderson's single most compelling creative imaginative novel it is a part of his larger Cosmere world, but it's meant to be written, it's meant to be read purely as a standalone. Um, it's a novel that he said he wrote for his wife, and it comes across, to me it comes across, like, the, in terms of the quality, it's it read like something above and beyond the other novels that his quality tends to fluctuate, and it did read like a novel well above some of his other stuff. Um, it's replaced Elantris as my single most recommended Sanderson novel for people who want a taste of his work and don't want to commit to a massive series. Um, absolutely beautiful story, absolutely creative imagination. There's been Sanderson on display. Um, definitely worth checking out. My next pick is actually, randomly, um, Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. Now yes, this is, you know, a children's, a, a children's book, but Lewis Carroll very much wrote a story that works for all ages. And even if you're familiar with it from your childhood, if you revisit it um, as an adult, it's one of those rare pieces of media that when you revisit it as an adult, you develop like a deeper appreciation for it. There's um, there's just so much madcap creativity on display that you can't help but enjoy yourself. I I read it as an adult on a recommendation from a friend. I I, I didn't expect to be tar to to thoroughly enjoy myself on what should have been a children's book the way that I did with this. It's absolutely worth revisiting, even if you think you're familiar with it as a child from your childhood. My next pick is actually another one that's probably appeared on quite a few lists of this nature, and that is Guy Gavriel K's Tigana. This is probably his single most popular novel, with good reason. Um, it's just an absolutely rich tapestry of high and epic fantasy in a signature style. It has an engaging cast, a unique world, and just everything we love about Guy Gabriel Key on brilliant display. Um, the reason why it's making an appearance on this list and not my first video of this nature is because actually having read The, the Lions of al -Rasan since, I would say that The Lions of al -Rasan is probably a better standalone than Tigana, if only that it's also shorter um, and way just as much as just as entertaining as Tigana is. But Tigana does it did capture quite a few readers for a reason. It's an absolutely beautiful novel, an absolutely thoroughly rich, thoroughly enchanting novel, and definitely worth checking out. And last but not least is probably the most obscure novel I am going to recommend on this list. Um, it's a novel that I really wish more people were familiar with. It, it definitely deserves a lot more attention and acclaim. And that's Margot Lanigan's Tender Morsels. Um, fairy tales do have a root in darkness. And that's the essence of what... Margot Lanigan captures in this novel. Unlike a lot of the other fairy tale fantasy books out there, she doesn't set out to retell an existing story, but rather, much like Neil Gaiman, she 
takes the heart and core in essence of what of of what makes a fairy tale tick and creates her own story and it's an absolutely brutal and absolutely dark story um, there's a lot of stuff in it that will trigger a lot of people uh, child abuse just to top the list j j just to start the list and that list being that just that one just being the tip of a very big iceberg um, I can see this being very uncomfortable reading for a lot of people but that's the point this is a dark story they, these are dark events and it's absolutely it's amazing that Mark Lanigan could take this type of content and create such a breathtaking novel out of it um, it, it it's it's really it, it's really difficult to talk about that novel without that like th those are the key things to know about that novel it's a very dark novel it will take you places you don't want to go it will discuss things you don't want to think about um, <laughs> for those people who expect trigger warnings on things that are recommended to them think of any trigger warning you you watch out for and consider it applied to this novel um, but it is a very rich a very compelling read and ultimately a very wonderful book and absolutely worth your time checking out and um, yeah that's my pick for another top 10 standalone fantasy novels as I continue to read and read more books when I come up with another list of 10 novels that I think are worth checking out I'll create another video like this so this is part two. Um, no plans for part three as yet, but it will happen at some point in the future. Um, if you've made it this far, I am excited to know what you think about these picks. Uh, feel free to drop something in the comments. Let me know. And if you've made it this far, thank you very much. 